Hello and welcome to a new video. It's been a while. Last time I did a video, I had 40 pounds more, right? So it's been a long time ago. But in the meantime, we were not sleeping actually, um, and uh, we were working on a lot of new stuff. After releasing Babylon 6, we are not now working on Babylon 7. Among the new features of Babylon 7, there will be a new one that I appreciate a lot, which is the node geometry. So let's jump right in right now. So. Here is the node geometry editor. You can think of the node geometry as a new set of classes available in Babylon.js that let you create procedurally new geometries, right? By default, Babylon.js gives you access to basic shapes like sphere, box, etc. But there was no easy way to create more complex or more advanced geometries by um, code. Okay? The node geometry is the solution for that. If you think about, for instance, in Blender, the geometry nodes, um, that's probably very similar. It, it's a, um, a tool, a set of classes that will let you plug together blocks to generate advanced geometries. Of course, just doing that with code will be a little bit tedious. So we decided to uh, use our uh, graph system to create a new tool named the Node Geometry Editor. That's what we have right now on the screen. So by default, the Node Geometry Editor will expect you to generate a geometry output, like it expects you to generate a geometry. In this case, the geometry is quite simple, it's a box, right? That box can be defined by a set of properties. It's actually a mimic of what we find in the Babylon SDK, but now in a visual form here. So for instance, if I want to set my overall size to one, but my width to, for instance, 10, I will end up with this object right there. So I can refocus my camera, right? And that's just a box with just a different width. Okay, you can switch to um, the wireframe view. Okay, let's try something a little bit more uh, complex. You can add a node by filtering the node or picking it right there, or you can hit space like I just did right now and just type what you want. So I'm going to take a grid instead of a box. So let me just get rid of the box. Here I'm going to move my, uh, sorry, here I'm going to move my grid right there. So the grid has an interesting aspect. I'll make that maybe a little bit uh, bigger. Let's say um, the width, I would say five by five. And if you look at the geometry, it's quite simple. It's two faces. I want a bit more than that because I will play with the geometry. So the subdivision can be linked like that, but you also have the option to just go to the properties here and set the value you want. So I'm gonna ask for 50 subdivisions. So now I have quite a, well-defined object okay now let's take this one we're going to apply transformation to the initial geometry and among the transformation i want to apply i want to redefine the positions so okay that object it's a loop it will go through all the vertices and apply a new position so that introduced the notion of conceptual values here position is a conceptual contextual values sorry meaning that this value will pump into the calling block, in this case, the set position, the current position. Remember, the set position is a loop, so it's gonna go through all the vertices, and for all of them, it will expect to get a position. And right now, I am just returning the actual position, so no changes, okay? Now, let's add another contextual object, which is gonna be the normals. And I can, for instance, add them, right? So instead of having just the position, I can add the normal. And what you saw on the screen is just the object move up because all the normals are pointing up. They are the same, just moving up, no change. But what if I want to perturb the normal by, for instance, using a noise? So I'm going to use a purling noise right there, okay? And I'm going to multiply it with the normals, okay? So I'm going to take my normal right there, inject that before the add, and I'm going to take my nose here, set uh, let's see the scale. Um, well, no, actually, yes, that's fine. Just move that this way. Okay. And as you can see, I can change the noise and it will change a little bit. Sorry, not the noise, the octaves. Uh, sorry about that. And it will change the complexity of it. I can also take the scale here and set a value between zero and 10. And by changing the scale, I will update my geometry, right? and create a ground, for instance. Here, let's switch to a maybe uh, this here. So something is weird, right? 
We change the position, but unfortunately, the normals are all still pointing to, um, to the y-axis. So what we can do here is add a compute normals. And now the system will reevaluate the normals based on the new position. And now we end up with a cool terrain, right? A cool ground that you just build dynamically. Isn't that cool, right? And of course you can uh, texture it if you want to. You can uh, apply any, no, any material on top of it, right? What I want to do right now, I could just stop here and save it. And we'll see what we can do after that within your own code. But I would like to add a, another um, step. I would like to plant tiny trees on my uh, ground. For that, let me first create a tree, a tree that's gonna be very simple. I'm gonna take a cylinder, you know what, here, a cylinder. I'm also gonna take a uh, sphere or an icosphere. So it will be a little bit more uh, fantasy style, right? And I'm gonna just merge the two of them with a merge node here. So I'm gonna take geometry one, merge them with geometry two, okay? Let's see how it looks, right, here. Okay, it's not that bad. It's not good, but not that bad. First, I want to reduce the diameter of my trunk to probably something like 1.2, okay. Then I want to take my icosphere right there and transform it because I want to move the sphere higher, right? So I'm gonna use a transform node. And maybe, you know what, I'm gonna maybe reduce the, um, yes, the trunk a little bit more. Here, I can pipe a translation Right. I'm going to zoom a bit. I'm going to pipe a translation, a rotation, or a scaling. In this case, I want to translate my um, sphere upper, let's say, to 0 0.8. Oh, too much, so 0 0.6. Perfect. What a wonderful tree, right? Maybe I'm going to make that one a little bigger, like 0 0.4. Okay, wow. I love this tree. Okay. Now I want to make it a little bit smaller because I want to remember the size of the, uh, I'm gonna merge it so we can see both. Remember the size here of my ground, it's something like that, right? So if I want to have more trees, I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna transform again here, and this time I'm gonna scale, I'm trying to reorganize my graph a little bit. I'm gonna scale down to something like probably 0.2. Okay, we don't see it, it's just below the surface here. Sounds pretty good. Okay, now, here, what I want to do is actually to instantiate on vertices, meaning that on every single vertices of my um, ground, right there, I want to instantiate my trees. Okay, see? So I have a lot of trees right now, okay? And we don't have the um, ground anymore, so I need to merge it back, okay? That's a lot of vertices, right? And we're gonna just reduce the density a little bit here to not take in account all the vertices, but maybe 40% of them, yes, that sounds better. And what I want to do as well is here in the translation of every single vert um, instances, I want to move them a little bit upper so they don't look like they are below the surface. Or maybe 0 0.1 should be fine. Yes, look at that. Isn't that cool? I created a forest, right, made of a lot of trees. We can look at the numbers here, like the infos. We have 1 million vertices, so it's probably not optimal, but it's a good example. One last thing I want to do in this demonstration is actually to show you how you can actually set up a multi-material by default. So Babylon will know that some object will have some material and some part of the object will have other, part, uh, other material. So here, let me add it a set material ID for the ground, okay? And I will give you the ID of zero, okay? And I will also give to the trees a material ID which will be different. So this object will be rendered with two um, draw call, one for the ground and one for the trees. Okay, and we'll give it a one. So this time I have my ground and the trees. And because it's dynamic, right? If I change, uh, I don't know, for instance, the noise here and move uh, the roughness to something different, everything will adapt. It's entirely dynamic. So you don't have to download a complicated object. It's all made locally. It's made in, let's see at the stats here. 
It's built in less than 200 milliseconds, so you can um, do that like literally live or ask a user question to build your ground, your world, or it could be done at the beginning of every level, for instance. And once you're done with that, you can save it here. You can save it as a file or you can save it as a URL in our um, uh, snippet server. And so let me jump into the, the second demonstration. What I did here, I created based on uh, Camertonus uh, assets a city. Literally, every single building, it's actually a node geometry that generates a new building based on one main uh, uh, input, which is the height of the building. So let's look at one building here, and you can see you can edit directly the node geometry. And that's a massive one. Like this one is quite big, right? I'm using teleports node that can send data from one part of the graph. So let me click on this one here to another part of the graph, right? So it's quite big. But the main point is, let's see, let's just reduce all of that so we can see <laughs> the rendering right there. Here I have a value which is the eight. If I change the eight of uh, my uh, building right there, I move to, I don't know, eight stories. See, automatically the system will move the windows to different places because we have windows, we have uh, curtains, we have um, corners, etc. We have um, the city, um, sorry, the, the road level, etc. That is entirely built upon one single parameter, which is the height. And if I go back to my world here, you can see that some buildings have very high uh, level values and some don't. And interestingly, there is no a single one, no, no duplicates for a good reason, because every one of them generates the windows or the curtains as different places, right? It's all entirely procedural and dynamics. So the city is built in three seconds because we need to go through all of them. That, that's a lot of um, objects. If I look at the stats, we have 84 meshes for a, tot a grand total of 10 million <laughs> faces. So it's quite a lot, right? And of, of course, it may not be realistic for a game, but you can then just generate what you want or reduce the complexity. I did not make any effort in, op in optimizing the, the meshes. It's more the game of it. But if you look at it, that's the entirety of the code, right? The code itself will start from right here here okay i generate a node geometry and i parse it directly from a save snippet so i can use node geometry editor to build it right and then reuse it in my code and from there i can then load because this object has a was built with the set material id meaning that the windows the curtains the corners they all have a different material id okay and so i can create a multimat to render it here and then I can load my assets, so the corners, the gap, straight, the windows, windows 2, from GLB object. And then I can affect that. Okay, I load the container, I load, add that to my scene, and then I can get my node geometry, get the block by name, because inside my uh, node geometry editor, I set up blocks with names. And actually, we can look at that right now. It's better to show it. For instance, here I have, uh, wait, oh yeah, I changed it. So let me just reload it. It's gonna be simpler. Not just gonna load it. It takes three seconds to compute. Yes, we're good. Okay. And so what I said is like, let's take for instance, this node here and edit it. Okay. And you can see here that we have nodes with name like corner or corner two. They are geometry, right? That are piped into the system, but they are using the mesh block, meaning that they are meant to be provided by the user when the code will be executed. And that's exactly what is happening right now. I'm getting a, um, a block by name and I'm affecting the mesh geometry. So you are not limited to just base shapes. You can load your own meshes and then pipe them into the system and let the system do some procedural work on them. So, that's it. That's everything is here. We load the node material. We pipe into the mesh blocks, the mesh data for each um, asset. And then we let it build 
And actually, that's the beauty of it, right? Because if you look at it, then uh, once the node material is ready and we have everything loaded, we can generate a building. And now I give it, okay, this is the node geometry. This is the material I want to use. And this is the location, X, Y, Z, and I rise, right? If I rise is set, I will want to have a value between 16 plus 8. Else, I just want a value of 2 plus um, 10. So between 2 and 12, or between 16 and 24. And then I call build on my node geometry. And then I can call create mesh. The node geometry will output a Babylon mesh. That's it. It's done. It's everything. So as you can see, it's quite powerful, super convenient to use thanks to the Node Geometry, Node Geometry Editor. And to be frank with you, my main motivation when I create this kind of tool is to see what you guys will build with that. So do not hesitate to comment down below uh, with your creation. I'll be super happy to uh, see what you uh, created. We also have our forum on forum.babylongs.com. Do not hesitate to swing by, ask questions or help other people use it. See you soon. Bye bye.